I've just upgraded my version of KDE Neon to Plasma 5.12 and normally I'm really excited about Plasma releases. Yes, they're marvellous. Lots of new features. Great. Brilliant. This time though, it sucks. I've had so many stability issues with the cute applications. In fact, this is actually my second take of the video, so that's really annoying. I might sound a bit fed up at this point. That's because I'm just basically doing a whole lot again because it crashed. What it does mean though on the positive side is you won't see all the crashes because it's been gradually getting better each time I've rebooted the system. How annoying though. On the positive side, that's good, I guess. Uh, one feature about Plasma 5.12 is it's supposed to be 30% faster at boot up. However, I have noticed no difference at all. It's still a little bit slow, but once you're using the system, it's perfectly fine and functional. 5.12 is a long-term support release for the desktop, similar to 5.8 good for any Linux distributions which are long-term support releases. For example, the likes of Kubuntu, which will be expecting a new release later this year. So I'll imagine that to be using the 5.12 desktop. I was looking through some of the changes and they don't seem to be too plentiful really. Looking on my browser here, that scroll bar absolutely sucks. So I went into the system settings to try and fix this. Just trying to think if I've got this open still. Uh, system settings and Stop opening up on the wrong. Stop opening on the wrong monitor. Uh, anyway, looking at the application style, the fine tuning. There seems to be no way of changing the scroll bars, and that's really annoying because I've taken the breeze icon theme. Oh, actually, there is. Oh, I can just choose to have no buttons on it. In fact, I thought it used to have buttons on here. Okay, maybe I have changed something. All right, there's the buttons there, but it's still ridiculously bloated and overweight. Not very good at all. Uh, there's no way of changing it for GTK applications. So yes, that's uh, yeah, very annoying so far. Looking at the default kickoff menu, you can now change the order of these icons on the left-hand side. So if I right click, go to the edit launcher settings, Stop opening on the wrong monitor. Sorry if it looks a bit odd on the theming, but this is a theme I like, Underworld. Still been using it for quite a few years now. Anyway, you can change the order of these tabs, they're calling them, so you can, let's take applications to the top, move computer to the bottom, or even take computer away, and we'll go for leave instead, apply that. And what do I have? So we have applications, favorites, history, and leave. That's a nice feature. It's not really my preferred menu choice. I prefer the dashboard view, but I appreciate the kickoff menu is the default for quite a few Linux distributions. So my option is to go to alternatives and take the application dashboard. Yes, that is more the view I am used to. I'm gonna to return to the system settings a moment. There was supposed to be one feature of, uh, there's supposed to be a new feature of getting a, a new red light type layout where it, uh, where it reduces the amount of blue light later in the evening. But as it turns out, that feature is only available for Wayland desktops. And guess who's using NVIDIA? And therefore the Xorg desktops. Yes, me. Anyway, I can't even see where this option would be. So I'm wondering if you get a different set of options on the display and monitor if you're using Wayland or Xorg. Probably quite likely. Yeah, the scaling seems to be improved and that's yeah, it's basically options I can't see here. And why won't I use Wayland? Well, I'm trying to absolutely abuse my graphics card at the moment, doing some password cracking with Hashcat, and it is essential I have the NVIDIA drivers. Tough luck to me, really. It's good to see I can get the incognito tabs back open on the browser now by right-clicking on the menu. I know that feature's been available for well, actually quite some time, except it hasn't been around in KD Neon for last few versions. I know it's been in the likes of Antergos and other Arch distros, but yeah, I've got it back now in KD Neon. Good. Under the clipboard contents, you now have these options to invoke actions. So I have copied an image here, so I can select invoke action and open that image up in a selection of different programs. So if I go for something like Krita, yeah, open it here in Krita. Let's go for zooming in and look at these scroll bars and yeah, they do seem a bit on the chunky side here in cute applications, but yeah, I guess it's not quite so bad as a GTK application there in Firefox. Hmm. I'm not impressed at that part at the moment. 
Anyway, looking at the other options you've got on the Invoke Actions, so you can actually open a web address. Although it is very picky on what the web address actually looks like. It does have to have the HTTP or HTTPS in it. If I use this edit contents and uh, take HTTP out, so basically just saying something like www.youtube.com or even just youtube.com, it doesn't pick up the invoke action in the same way. So yeah, it doesn't do anything now, which is a shame. Well, what does it do for a terminal command? Nothing. And you've got the option to delete from the history. It's not an option I particularly use much with the clipboard in the system tray, but you can see it being useful. For me, I just tend to do copy and paste on the previous item. So I don't tend to go into what else is in the clipboard. I saw on the new features they were making a big thing about vaults. And uh, well, that is a useful feature if you come from the 5.8 release, you wouldn't have necessarily known about it, but that did appear in the 5.11 release of KDE. So yeah, I've had that around for a version already and I've done a video on it if you want to see more about it. Quite an interesting add-on though, you can encrypt a specific folder on your system and it allows you to hide contents from other users. The weather settings now supposedly gives you the option to display the temperature. For me though, it is greyed out and I don't know how you ungrey it. And I have expanded the size of that panel, given it plenty of room and it does not give me that option. I don't know why. It's very much a puzzle. Considering when I hover over it, you can see the temperature there. If I select it, yes, we have that option. And if I right click and go run the associated application, we end up with Kate open <laughs> for some reason. Got this warning about the longest lines being too long, but it does seem to give me the option here for temporarily raise limit and reload file. I don't recall that being an option before in Kate, although if it was, I may be standing corrected there. So apologies if I have got that wrong. Opening up Discover, and this crashed on me before as well when it wouldn't get the updates finished. It does seem to be sat here checking updates for quite some time. It came up with a little warning there at the bottom of the screen, which I didn't manage to quite read. Looking at the applications now, I think the layout has changed slightly. It's supposed to look a bit cleaner. The install button is hidden under there under that panel. That's my fault on the layout of the desktop, not necessarily the application's fault. Under the settings, we can see the sources. That's nice. Selecting the, selecting the source, we have the option to search or delete it. Clicking on search doesn't actually bring up anything, which is wrong because this uh, repository for Backbox gave me the packages to install Hashcat as well as a few other things. So yeah, that is actually an available item. The snap back end has a button here that is hidden under the scroll bar, so I can't actually access it. Great. <laughs> Pressing control and escape to bring up the system activity now shows a graph under this CPU monitor. A bit difficult for me to see, actually scrub that, it's next to impossible for me to see, because I've got quite a hefty CPU in my system, the AMD 1800X with 16 cores. I don't necessarily get to that high up on the system usage. But what we can do just to show it off is render a video in KGN Live. Helps if I click yes, so yes, we are now rendering, and you can see a very thin line on that graph. I was struggling to think what else I could open that would start generating 100% CPU usage. And yeah, I can't even go for something like a 4K video off YouTube because that uses absolutely bugger all CPU as well. Ah, first world problems of having too much of a powerful CPU. Anyway, that has been a look at KDE Plasma 5.12. Uh, I have to say I'm disappointed with this release, uh, although stability has started to improve. There's still the issues with theming. Those scroll bars have gone back to being bloated, although there's that very narrow point in the middle so it should look thin but it isn't <sighs> yeah it's a shame really because how much of a kde fanboy have i been for some time it doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to jump to another desktop though but i may need to look at reinstalling my operating system which i know i've muttered about before but thanks for watching see you all later